Hey everyone, are you ready to do our fourth section of filler blocks? Hi CC friends, so Kristen saw him here and we are continuing with our cup of chair quilt. So today we are going to do the fourth section of the filler blocks. We've been doing this quilt in sections so that we don't have to spend too much time just piecing them all together. Cause like I said in the previous filler block videos, I find that really boring. And everybody in the group has been um, agreeing with doing it this way, that this is more fun. And so it's going really well so far. So today's uh, filler blocks for section four, we have five of them and they're bigger ones. So I'm not sure how many we'll be able to fit together. I am going to show you once I get to the computer how we can merge them together and we'll see what we can fit. My guess is probably a couple of hoopings, but maybe we can do it in one. I'm not sure. We'll see. So as I mentioned before, on many of the blocks, most of the blocks, I have done them. I cut mine just a little bit larger and then I'm cutting them down to size before we piece them together. But I also showed in that first filler block video that you do not have to do that. If you already pre-cut your um, fabrics to the size listed in the book, that absolutely works fine. So you'll see that again today. We saw it in the first filler block um, video, you'll see that we can do it both ways because once again, we are going to piece a section together or not a section, a, a filler block uh, together. And so for that one, we will need to have it regular size. So let's go ahead and go over that. So the very first one is the one that we are going to have to piece it together before we quilt it. So on these, my recommendation is definitely to cut it to the size listed in the booklet. And so each of these are two and a half by two and a half. So it starts with this stripe one and then the light gray with white snowflakes on it. Again, two and a half by two and a half. And then uh, the pink, it's like a grapefruit coral, coral pink. And I did back each of these with fusible stabilizer. That's completely optional. I, I like it better. I've gone over that in a lot of the videos. So these three, we are going to piece them together before we quilt it. So um, it will end up being two and a half by six and a half and these three pieces that are currently two and a half by two and a half. So that we'll piece that all together and then we will quilt it. So notice the direction, right? So we have the stripes and then the gray snowflakes and then the pink snowflake, or not snowflake, sorry, the pink silky solid. So the reason I mentioned that is because in the first one, I turned mine, I had to turn mine opposite because of the directional quilting. So just make sure that you're doing yours how you want yours to be, and we'll go over that. So on the batting, um, since our final cut size of this one piece is two and a half by six and a half, I cut my batting to three by seven. So three by seven for your first piece of batting. And again, it's these three pieces that will be sewn together before we quilt. So once we quilt this, we are going to use tree one in two by six. So again, it's a directional one. So I made that mistake on that first one and I pointed it out several times in the video. Um, this will be a directional fabric or a directional print. So if you end up doing yours, imagine it this way, right? So imagine the, the um, stripes and then the snowflakes and then the silky solid. If you do your tree and it's going the opposite way, like how mine was, then you would need to turn your fabric so that, because you want your Christmas trees obviously upright. You don't want upside down Christmas trees. So that was the issue that I had on that first one. And actually I might purposely, I haven't decided for sure, I might purposely turn mine upside down so that my two stripe fabrics are not together. So so I haven't decided on that just yet and when I get there I'll show you um, but I might end up doing mine purposely backwards meaning the the pink and then the gray snowflakes and then the stripes just because I did make that mistake and then I'd have the two stripes together so if uh, there were actually several people that did that where their Christmas trees were upside down and so they had to turn it and so they had the stripes in the wrong place as well so we'll, we'll decide if we want to um, fix that up by not having the stripes together or we could have them together either way 
All right, so that's the first one. There are five. So on number two, it is this really cute navy blue with all those Christmas things on there. So notice I said I turned it around because of that jingle. But then other things are upside down. So it's not going to matter at all. But I'm just pointing out it's not a directional fabric. So on this one, the original size is supposed to be two and a half by six and a half. I cut mine to three by seven, a half inch larger. Um, and then I will cut it down after I do the quilting. And again, that's optional. It's not required at all. Um, but you can choose to do that. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer and like I said, mine is three by seven. So on my batting, you either way you're gonna want your batting to be three by seven. So I've got it, you can see it's the same. So my batting and my fabric are both three by seven. So that just makes it so that it will tack it down. You can actually um, tack down your batting when it's at least a half inch larger. So that's why I did my fabric. If, if you didn't catch why I cut my fabric larger in my first video the reason is because then it will tack down and if you are not doing it this way if your fabric is already pre-cut to the regular size then you would just tape it in place not a problem at all either way will work so i did three by seven two and a half by six and a half is fine um, and this is for our second one so when we quilt this one we're going to use two by six lines six line six in two by six and we're going to use the horizontal design so on this tree by the way i didn't mention it's the vertical design all right so we'll talk about that oh how cute that will be vertical that will be good um so anyway we'll go over don't worry all the pictures will have all the exact information but this one like i said is going to be line six in two by six in horizontal all right so that's number two number three is this light gray with holly leaves holly berries on it and I cut mine to three by seven again two and a half by six and a half is the official size we will have to cut it down to two and a half by six and a half if we did it um, larger so three by seven or two and a half by six and a half and then your batting three by seven three by seven on your batting no matter which size you did three by seven on your batting all right and then for this one we will quilt it with line six also so the same as this one number two and number three are both line six in a in a two by six horizontal design all right that's number three number four so you can see these are a little bit larger and that's why i'm not sure if we'll be able to fit them all in one hoop my guess is we won't but we'll see when we get there so this one is the green with flowers on it flowers and and stems of the flowers all right and this one um i started mine at five by five so that means that the official size is four and a half by four and a half so either way four and a half by four and a half or five by five and then you will want your batting to be five by five for this five by five for your batting i did back my my um, fabric with fusible stabilizer we are going to quilt it um, so quilting doesn't have a lot of stitching, so you can absolutely choose to not back these. I like them backed. I've, I've gone over that. It's totally optional for you. So five by five or four and a half by four and a half. And with your batting, that is five by five. This is for number four. And then we're going to quilt it. So on this one, we're going to quilt it with tree one. Very cute. I really like that design. Um, so tree one in four by four in horizontal. So remember, we went over this on this last video and several others. When there's a design that has either horizontal or vertical, make sure to choose the one that you're planning on for your quilt. So the one for this one is four by four horizontal tree one. And that's for number four. The last one, number five, is this light blue um, silky solid. And this one, I started mine at five by seven. So that means that the official size is four and a half by six and a half. And you can do it either way. And then we are going to have batting with this. So I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. It's that very light blue, like a sky blue, very pretty. Um, and I did mine in five by seven, or you can do four and a half by six and a half. So on this are um, 
batting is going to be, what is it, five by seven. So five by seven. So I did it the same size as my cut of fabric. That makes it easy because then I know that I have tack down room for each of these. And again, totally optional up to you. Five by seven for your batting. And then we are going to quilt this. This is the last one. This is number five. We're going to quilt this with winter two. Winter two, and it's going to be in size four by six. Four by six for our winter two for number five, the one on the light blue silky solid. All right, those are the five um, filler blocks that we have for section four. And I'm going to bring you to the computer and show you how we can get in less hoopings. You can do all five, you can do five hoopings, absolutely, or you can merge them a little bit and see if you can get it down to one or two hoopings. So let's go ahead and see how we can do with that. And after you get your filler blocks done, when we piece everything together, the blocks that you're going to want are the R from the cheer two, that one we did earlier, so we'll need that one for our section four, and then the teal colored of the star, all right, and this one, it won't matter which way the, the quilting is because it's all, it's all over the place. It doesn't matter. So that one. And then the snowflake, and this is the one with the navy blue thread color snowflake. And again, it looks like the direction doesn't matter. It's that Christmas with the snowman and the snowflakes or um, swirls. And then for the present, so obviously this one is directional. So we will need the first one, the present one, or it's gift box one, sorry, gift box one. We will need that for our section four. And then once we have all of our filler blocks done, we can start putting these all together and I'll go through that step by step. Hey everyone, real quick, so let's go and um, see how we can get these into one or two hoopings. So I am going to open in Brilliance Essentials and uh, let's see, it's opening to my nine by 14 hoop. That's what I used last. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. So let's start by going to merge stitch file. And the first one is tree one right here in two by six vertical. All right, tree one, two by six in vertical, two by six vertical. So right here, two by six vertical, double click on that. And then I'm just going to bring it over here to the upper edge corner. All right, and that's for this one, okay? The one that we're going to sew the pieces together. All right, and then for number two, we are going to go to merge stitch file And I'm going to close tree one, and we are looking for lines six right here. I use Pez for my machine, and I'm looking for two by six in horizontal. Two by eight, two by six, horizontal. Right there, double click on that. All right. So the next, that's number two. That's for this one. All right, and then the next one is also a two by six in horizontal. So to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna go ahead and um, change this one and then I can just do a copy and paste. All right, so I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm gonna click outside of the box so that um, nothing is highlighted. And then just like I will do on the others, I'm going to click on this default one blue because remember there's two default blues and they will join together if we don't change the color. So normally I would do them in order, but I'm going to do it now so that um, I can copy and paste. That'll just be quicker than changing the colors on all of them. All right, right now when I opened it, it came to palette. So I wanna make sure to click on threads. I don't wanna use a color I've already used. So palettes is when you are picking a color that's already in your design. So I'm gonna click on this first one that comes up, which is dark aqua. You know the drill. Then we go to orange, click on the color, and the first one that comes up for me is blaze. And then back to number three, it's two, three here. And this one, I'm going to go to the second color, which is marine. And then the next orange, click on that color. And we've already used blaze, so I'm gonna click Oriole. 
All right, and then on this turquoise, the five um, filler blocks that we're doing are actually all different colors. So I don't, I wanna make sure that those do not join. Looks like actually three and four might both be, let's see, tree, no, they're all different. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. So I'm gonna click on the color here and then I'm going to choose sea green and the reason i'm choosing sea green is because the first one right here will be sprout so i'm going to go ahead and click the second one which is sea green all right so that one is all done and i can go ahead and click copy Control c on my keyboard and then Control v to paste it and it goes right over the top of the next of the one that we just did so i'm just going to click on the stitching and move it out of the way see how easy that was i'm going to bring it all the way over here to the right Okay, so those are done. Those are complete. Those, those, um, the two and three, number two and three. Number one, we still need to change the colors. So I'm going to keep bringing in the last two. This one, the next one, number four, this was number three, by the way. And then number four is uh, the tree one in four by four. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm looking for tree one. I'm gonna go ahead and close this line six. We're done with that. And uh, tree one right there, plus sign and Pez for my machine. And then it recalculates all of the, it, it brings up the designs. So we're looking for four by four in horizontal. And right there, four by four, tree one, horizontal. Double click on that and it goes to the center and I'm just gonna move it over here and see what we have room for. I think we're gonna do it, guys. I think we're gonna be able to fit all five in one hooping. And like I said, I'm on my nine by 14 hoop. You can see that down here. All right, so that's number four. So this next one, I'm going to go to merge stitch file. That was, this was number four, by the way. All right, and then number five is this light blue one, and we are looking for winter two. That'll be cute. I believe that's the snowman one. So I'm just closing the tree one and looking for winter two right there, and we're looking for a four by six design. So I'm going to go to block by block. Make sure you choose block by block. I'm gonna close this so you can see. There's a block by block option or a clear blue tiles option. And I've mentioned it before that if you do the clear blue tiles, then you don't have the placement and tack down stitches for the batting and the main fabric, and we want those. So we are using the block by block technique, and then I use Pez for my machine, and we're looking for a four by six. And it is right there, four by six, double click on that. It goes to the center and click on the stitching to move it out of the way all the way over in the corner, making sure not to go over the hoop at all. I think this one we can bring over just a tad more. All right, so you can see there is not much room between these at all. So I will have to watch while it does the basting stitch. Once the basting stitch is done, it should be fine. But this is very, very close. So if you have a 10 by 16, you can certainly go larger. I'm gonna keep it at nine by 14. I feel comfortable with this. If your um, fabrics, if you cut them to the size listed in the book, you are not gonna have to worry about any overlap at all. I will have a little bit of overlap and I'm okay with that. I think it'll be fine. All right, so remember, we need to make sure and change our colors like we did on this second one. The second and third are already done. So I'm gonna scroll up here to this first one. That's that tree right there. And I'm gonna just use the colors that I already used on number two. So same thing, click on one one right here. And then I'm gonna change it to dark aqua because that's what we used on two because we want all of the, these parts to join except for the thread color at the end for the quilting. We don't want that to, to group and I'll show you. All right, so for this first one, we're looking for dark aqua. Say okay. And then we used blaze, so I'm gonna look for blaze right there. And then this third one, we used marine. It's right there. And the fourth one, we used Oriole. So I'm gonna click on the color and click on Oriole. All right, and then remember, we wanna change this so that we don't want all of them to have default 17 turquoise or those will join. So I'm gonna change these as well. 
and I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to click on the first one which was sprout because we used sea green you can see it down here I can't scroll right now while this window's open but I remember we used sea green so I'm going to use sprout for this number one right here it's one five all right, and here's the sea green. So we just want to make sure that these are all different because we are using, we want time for it to stop our machine so that we can change our thread color. So one is all done, two is all done, three is all done. So we're on number four now. And same thing as before, I'm going to scroll up so I can see the colors. Um, click on the color and we know that we used the first one, which is dark aqua. And then for the orange, the first one was blaze. And then we are on 4-3 now, and we used the second one, which is marine. And for the orange, the second one is oriole. All right, and then when we get to this default 17 turquoise, this is the uh, quilting design, and we want it different than the other. So I'm going to click on the color, and I'm going to choose the third one, which is mint right here, because we know we already used sea green and sprout. All right, and then number four is done. We're on to number five. So right here, five, one, I know I want dark aqua. And then for number two, we want blaze. And when I say number two, you can see it right here. It's the second one in this fifth um, quilting design or quilting block. All right, and then for the third one, five, three, click on the color and we know we want marine. And for the orange, we want Oreo. All right, and then for this, um, the turquoise, the quilting color, we used mint last, so I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna use what's after mint, which is magic mint. All right, and those are all done. So that was extremely easy. We are such pros at this now, don't you think? All right, so there are 25 color steps right now. We should be able to knock it down to like five I think let's check and see so if we go to utility color sort oh not five because we have each of the um, quiltings colors different so let's check it we have 17 color changes so click on new view it opens another tab and click on that plus sign so we can see what it did and check it all all right there's the placement for our batting and our tack down for our batting those are all grouped placement for the main fabric and the tack down for the main fabric and then we have the first quilting design the second one so I need to change this I forgot all right so I have to fix that we're going to have to go back to our first tab so this is a really good opportunity for us to notice what happened here so I forgot to change um, the color when I did that copy and paste it made it so that they're um, now grouped and we don't want that grouped because they are actually different uh, thread colors So I will go back and let's see on this last one number four and number five So just that one error that I made so I am going to say nope I don't want untitled to this is not what I wanted to happen I'm going to say close this and do I want to save it? No, I don't because there's an error Kristen made a mistake all right, so now we're back on Untitled 1, the first one that has all those changes we made. And I want to point this out. See how this window is all clear and you're like, oh my gosh, what happened to all the stuff I did? I don't know why it goes all clear, but if you click on it, they come right back. There it is. All right, so all I'm going to do is on the quilting design of this third one, we don't want two and three that both have the same quilting color. So I'm just going to cl click this plus arrow here plus sign and it will open up all those five steps and then we have sea green and so we just want to change that to a color we haven't used before so I'm going to click on this color here and we know we used magic mint we have not used cloud I'm just remembering from what we used before so I'm going to click on cloud and say okay and now everything should group except for those uh, quilting designs the number five on each step should not join all right, so let's do it again. Utility color sort. And we have 16 color changes. New view opens another tab. See, there's our new tab, and now they're all joined together. And let's just re real quick check. Batting, uh, tack down, main fabric, tack down. And one, two, three, four, five different quilting stops. So that's Perfect, absolutely perfect. 
So I am going to go to File, Save, Stitch, File, As. And let's see, I have them in, where did I keep them? I believe I have, yep, I made my own folder. You click on this button here on a PC and to create a new folder. And I did that and I've got all of my filler blocks together. So I'm gonna open up that folder. And now we are on section four. I'm just gonna change the file name to say section four fillers. And I'm going to also say 9 by 14 hoops so that I remember what hoop size that I need, but that'll be fine. All right, and then say save. All right, how easy was that? Oh my gosh, we are just awesome. So we made, I made that very small mistake, and so we got to learn to see what happens if we um, make a mistake and how to go back and use those tabs. So that worked out really well. Good learning experience by making a mistake. All right, so we're all set. Let's do our filler blocks and finish section four.
I've been doing the the quilt 